Today, I lost control of my car. A near fatal car crash. And I remember my car teetering over the edge of the bridge. And a miraculous rescue. It was like these hands almost swooped down like this and took my car. Saved by an angel. That's next on Canadian Edition. Hello and welcome to the Canadian Edition of the 700 Club. I'm David Gartz and thank you for joining us for today's programs. We have some exciting things coming up in the next several weeks for the worldwide family of the Christian Broadcasting Network. We have seven days of blaze coming uh, where we pray specifically for prayer needs and you should be getting information about that. But after seven days of blaze, are you ready for this? We are going to celebrate the 50th, that's right, 50 50th anniversary of the founding of the Christian Broadcasting Network. And it is going to be something. We're going to have a wonderful time of spiritual ministry. Reinhard Bonnke is going to be with us. There's going to be fireworks. We're just going to be celebrating God's goodness to and through this ministry and God's calling on Pat Robertson's ministry. Now, we'd like to extend an invitation. An invitation is going out around the world for people to come and join us in Virginia Beach, Virginia, uh, to be a part of that celebration. And so there'll be some additional information coming up. You can go to the CBN web website, that's cbn.org, and find out more information about those celebrations that are coming. So we want you to be a part. If you can come, great. If you can do it from a distance, celebrate with us God's faithfulness to Pat Robertson's vision of the worldwide ministries of the Christian Broadcasting Network. Fifty years of faithfulness. Thanks be to God. We also want to remind you that throughout the program today, our prayer lines are open 877-431-7887 and 416-431-0700. If you've got something to celebrate, you'd like to tell somebody about, new grandchild or an answer to prayer, or if you have a deep need this day, that you need God on the scene, we're standing by to pray with you and for you as you give us a call. So use those toll-free lines. That's what they're there for. We'd love to hear from you. When Christine Martin went joyriding with a friend, she never dreamed how close to death she would come. Christine's car spun out of control and was teetering on the edge of a bridge. Then suddenly, listen to this, her life was saved by an angel. Christine Martin lived every girl's dream. The newest clothes, the coolest shoes, and money to burn. I was used to having very, very nice things, and things actually had a hold on me. It was a matter of the thing and the home and the nice car and the country club or the yachts or the you know, driving around in, in beautiful things with your windows down so people could see you. But behind the country clubs and privileged lifestyle, Christine was living a nightmare. The molestation happened from the ages from 3 to 13. So it was happened in a very long time of my life. It was forceful and not pleasant. Yeah, it was just really embarrassing and continual, a nonstop. The abuse came from not one, but two men in her extended family. But Christine never told a soul. I was this inner kid inside screaming, wanting to tell somebody, please help me. But I was told, do not say anything, do not tell your parents, no one is to know, this is our secret. While the physical abuse eventually stopped, the emotional pain only got worse. I was very, very damaged, very hurting, very broken, lonely. Uh, insignificant. I felt that no one wanted me. And just when she thought she couldn't feel any lower, she was raped at a party by a stranger when she was 16. I had this horrible, disgusting, dirty feeling relived all over again in this horrible dark stillness just captivated every part of me. I sat in the shower um, and almost made, I made myself bleed. You know, I scrubbed so hard and scratched my body pulled my hair at its scalp because I just wanted to get every part that he had touched off me and away from me. As I told one girlfriend and she's like, oh, you better keep it quiet, you know, this is a good school and your parents and you don't want to make a, make a fuss. So I kept it quiet. Then her father lost his contracting business. She couldn't hide her pain behind a lavish lifestyle. And she used other things, drugs, alcohol, and promiscuity to mask her pain. I did not have any value for myself as a woman. 
Um, a body was just, you know, there's no respect for it. It's already been taken advantage of, so why does it matter to give it away? I would do drugs every single weekend, and whenever I could, almost several times during the week, I'd smoke pot, I would get high, I would skip school. But all that changed one day when she was 19. She had been joyriding with a friend. I lost control of my car, and my car had spun in 360s for about 50 yards. And I remember my car teetering over the edge of the bridge. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to die with the fish. You know, I didn't think about clothes. I didn't think about people. I didn't think about family. I cried out and said, dear God, please rescue me. That's all I remember uttering. And I remember as my car was on fire, teetering over this bridge, a huge, I know it was an angelic presence, about five stories tall, massive, wide in stature, just strong and gray like, took my car, and it was like these hands almost swooped down like this, and took my car and teetered it right off the bridge onto the grass. My car door flung open, and I just remember rolling out and laying on the grass. While she was there, she thought about the angel that set her car to safety. Then she remembered going to church as a child and knew it was finally time to give her heart to Jesus. And there was this uncommon peace that I had not ever known that had come over my body and swept over my soul. And I felt for the first time in my life that I was valuable, that someone cared about this girl, that I was going to be okay. And that day radically transformed my life. And it's like I fell in love with this Jesus that everyone had talked about, but I had never known. He became so real to me on that particular day, just as real as I'm talking about him now, that I knew that all the pain and all the tragedy and everything that I had gone through, you know, maybe was not in vain because at 19, there was still a purpose for my life and I wasn't going to be some washed up druggy you know, whisking life away and using people the rest of her life. Christine is married now and has a wonderful son, Solomon. She and her husband love to share what Christ has done in their lives. My life is amazing. I know it's because I know who I am in Christ, that Jesus has become literally my friend. He's so real to me. He is the fiber of why I do what I do, why I breathe, why I live, why I exist. It is all because God showed me grace. You know, we just sense that God is in a new era here with us in terms of helping us to understand that He's real, that He's willing to intervene on our behalf, and we're just getting story after story, like the one that you've just seen, of how God is willing to do the impossible. When we've come to the end of ourselves and can't help ourselves any further, then God Himself intervenes. And this dispatching of angels is something that has always interested me. But I have to confess, you know, I'm an academic. I think you know I'm a pastor, but also a university professor and PhD and all that stuff that goes with it. And we, we PhDs tend to be a little skeptical. Uh, we want some proof. Uh, we want to, to know for sure whether or not that actually did happen. Is that true? And we're finding over and over again now substantial proof that God does work miraculously. Are you at a point in your life at this very moment that unless God intervenes, it's over? There's no more hope? There's no more possibility? You've exhausted everything at your disposal. You have nowhere else to turn. It's the perfect opportunity for God to demonstrate that He's God. See, God intervenes miraculously when He knows that nobody else and nothing else can get the credit. You've come to the end of your resources, the end of yourself, so to speak. There's no other place to turn. God has to do it. And when He does it that way, the reason He often allows us to come to the end of ourselves is so that it's clear for us at least, and perhaps others who are participating with us and watching as we handle this, that God has revealed Himself and done a miracle. So I want to pray for you right now that God will intervene. Father, in the name of Jesus. We have people watching today who themselves are at the end of their ropes or who are brokenhearted and carrying a heavy burden for friends and family that have nowhere else to turn. And so, Father, we would ask that by your mercy and by your grace, you would do what is necessary to rescue, to save, to touch, to heal, to deliver your people. Would you do it, Lord, in a way that brings ultimate glory to you so that there's no doubt that it was God who did it? And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. And if 
you're willing to embrace that by faith and want someone else to agree with you in prayer in a, in a more personal way, we'd encourage you to call our toll-free lines at 877-431-7887 and 416-431-0700. When God intervenes, the next day it's a brand new day. The doubt is minimized. The confidence in God arises. Faith is built because we know that we know. We've had an experience. I love this, the saying that says, a man with an experience is never at the mercy of a man with an argument. Once you've experienced God miraculously, you will know that you know that you know. Well, still to come, a pregnancy where the baby had no heartbeat for three weeks. Not only was there absent cardiac activity, but the baby had not grown. It was all consistent with what we know to be a, a miscarriage. Meet the couple who refuse to believe their doctor's report. Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. It makes no difference to me if you are rich or poor, what language you speak or where you live. I come to every man, woman, and child. My only wish is to know you and for you to know me. But the decision to accept me is yours. I'll never force my way into your life. But for those who do invite me in, I will live with them and they will have eternal life. There's someone knocking at the door of your heart. His name is Jesus Christ. Will you invite him in? Call or write the 700 Club today. In just uh, a few weeks, we'll be into Seven Days Ablaze, which is our CBN Worldwide Family's commitment to pray for the needs of our viewers and our partners. And we want you to be a part of that. You should have received a mailing uh, with the opportunity to fill out a prayer request card and send it back to us. If you haven't received it yet, you'll receive it shortly. If you don't receive one, or if you're not on our mailing list, please call us at 877-431-7887 and 416-431-0700 because we want to pray for you. So give us a call. Well, with our special guests, here's Terry Musin. Speaking of miracles today, you're about to meet a couple who believes in miracles. Candace and Dennis Gaines wanted a full house, so they were thrilled when Candace became pregnant with their third child, until doctors told them that their baby's heart had stopped beating. I found out I was pregnant at maybe six weeks or so. Um, then maybe about at my two-month mark, I started cramping and experiencing spotting and um, by the end of the day it had progressively worsened. The ultrasound showed that you could see the fetus but uh, there was no cardiac activity and so I sent her over to the hospital where they also did an ultrasound and again came up with the same diagnosis of a fetal demise. So we began praying that weekend and uh, we were very confident you know that when we went back in Monday morning that we would have good news. But they didn't hear the report they hoped for. And once again, there was no heartbeat. The same situation. There was no fetal cardiac activity. And uh, Candace and her husband were both adamant that they felt that this pregnancy was going to continue. The doctor reluctantly agreed to give them more time. After two weeks, they went for a third ultrasound. Things had gotten worse. And not only was there absent cardiac activity, but the baby had not grown. The growth of the baby had, you know, there was, it was, she was lagging two weeks behind where the growth it should have been at, at, you know, at seven weeks, she was only measuring five weeks. So there was, there was, it, it was all consistent with what we know to be a, a miscarriage. This is the latest technology, you know, and just seeing the monitor where the heart should have been beating, there was nothing there. This time he had actually showed us where a blood clot or sac had begun forming underneath the fetus. In the face of impossible odds, Dennis and Candace refused to give up. My concerns were, and, and this happens, is when uh, pregnancy fails and it's, and it's not doing well, eventually it can become, there can be infections or heavy bleeding and hemorrhage and all these other uh, complications from not going after uh, and taking care of this. Time had run out and the baby had to be removed. 
The day the Gaines met with their doctor, Dennis had one last request. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Candace and Dennis Gaines. It's great to have you both with us. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay, Dennis, what was that one last request? I refused to accept that uh, this baby would not be born. I had a covenant with God, just like Hannah did in 1 Samuel. And uh, there had to be some event that would change the course of everything that we had seen so far. And I just wasn't ready to accept what the doctors had to say. So how did your doctor respond to you? He obliged us. Uh, he, at this point, kind of wanted to move on with the medical procedure. And uh, we weren't ready. And we kind of dragged it out a few weeks. And, uh, and when I asked him if we could once more check to see if there was a heartbeat, he, uh, he pulled the equipment out and we, and we did as we had done weeks before. And uh, miraculously, this time, there was a heartbeat. What was that like, Candace? Amazing, amazing. Um, this was our third attempt at trying to conceive a child. Uh, I was over 40 years old at the time, and um, we were further along in our pregnancy than we had been with the previous miscarriages. So when the um, initial symptoms of a miscarriage um, began um, showing up, mm -hmm. we went to the emergency room immediately, and that's when we received the initial report that um, my body was preparing for once again another miscarriage. So tell me about that moment where you're on the table, your husband has said one last time, just let us have one last ultrasound to check this out. What happened? Um, I'll never forget, Dr. Terry Berry almost popped out of his seat <laughs> and he kept telling me, look, there is a heartbeat, uh, 141 uh, beats per second. And all I could say was, thank you, Jesus. It was just total shock. Was it almost hard to grasp it after what you'd been told over and over and over again over the past couple of weeks? And now suddenly, here's the reality of what you'd been praying for. It was yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Like I said, I couldn't look at the monitor. And Dr. Terry Berry kept pointing, look, look, there is a heartbeat. But uh, it was over a course of three weeks, and my body was still um, undergoing some of the same symptoms of a miscarriage. I continued yeah. to um, spot and bleed. So... It was truly amazing. Well, we have a clip of your doctor's reaction. Let's take a look. So I walk in the room. They were, there was no um, uh, apprehension on her face. I was the one that had all the apprehension. And uh, we did an ultrasound, and uh, there, was, there was a heartbeat. And uh, you know, there's nothing short of a miracle. We love it when we hear doctors use the M word. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm sure he was blessed by that as well. Absolutely. Your doctor was an amazing man who really spoke into the, the hope that you had at that time. Well, your baby is now three years old. She's with us today, appropriately named Grace. Grace, come on in here. Look at you. Wow, there's a miracle. <laughs> now, how did the two of you hope on hope through the weeks that even after you heard that heartbeat, did you have concern about whether this pregnancy was going to really go full term? Oh, absolutely. And for me, um, I relied a lot. I was encouraged by my husband's faith because I remember him developing a stack of three by five cards and he just continued to pray over me and he mm. would put his hand on my stomach and he would quote scripture after scripture, you know, just speaking life and to the womb. Into the so womb. It, yeah. mm -hmm. Dennis, tell us about Grace and the addition that she's been to your family. I'm in awe every day. Uh, with my first two children, I was a strict father, you know, to the letter. Here's what we'll do and here's how we'll turn out. Uh, with this one, those rules all went out the window. <laughs> uh, she sleeps with us every night, unlike the other two. Uh, she drinks more chocolate milk than the average child should. <laughs> It's absolutely amazing. I think we should change your name to Grace. Yes. <laughs> well, she's beautiful. Grace, it's so wonderful to have you with us today. And she is just a, a darling, darling child. And Thank I know you. she's been a blessing to you. Absolutely. absolutely. And it's a blessing to us to hear how God honored the desire of your hearts. Sometimes we forget that the desire of our heart is placed there by God mm -hmm. himself. So sure. Grace really is a fulfillment on more than one level. She's beautiful. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing you your story much. with He's us.
Thanks so much, Terry. What a powerful confirmation that God is at work, that he does things in the supernatural that we can't do for ourselves. And if you'd like to know more about what that means, we would ask you to call us at those toll-free lines and ask for the little teaching booklet, Secrets of the Supernatural, where Pat basically unfolds and reveals how God works in the supernatural environment. We want you to be aware of the nature of God and how God works and that he is willing to basically move heaven and earth on your behalf if you'll trust him. So 877-431-7887 and 416-431-0700. Well, coming up, a terrifying car crash. The first thought that went through my head is, where's Elise? How this four-year-old was lost. At that point, we just knew she was dead. And found. She said, well, Jesus picked me up and moved me, Mom. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but his own. Away my soul and sing. Join the 700 Club, and together we will send this message around the world. The three-year-old you just met was touched by the supernatural before she was even born, but the child in our next story experienced the same power when she was just four years of age. One instant, Elise Hester was sitting at a drum set, and the next, she was in the middle of a miracle. It's just like an explosion. I mean, that's the only way you can describe it. An SUV speeding at over 100 miles an hour ripped through the concrete wall of this music store. Rick and Teresa Hester had taken their four-year-old daughter there. Little Elise loved to play the drums. I was sitting on the drum set um, in front of her, and she was on the drum set behind me. The vehicle plowed over the drum set where Elise was sitting and went through the wall into the mattress store next door. I started to see just maybe two feet in front of me, and there was pieces of debris in the floor. And I looked down, and all of the drums where we were sitting were taken out. And the first thought that went through my head is, where's Elise? And Teresa hollered Elise's name out twice with no response. And at that point, we just knew she was dead. I looked down at the floor to see if I could see her feet sticking up because pieces of the ceiling were caved in and pieces of the wall, the light was coming in more. You could see pieces of the wall on the floor. I felt afraid. And honestly, it's, it's so strange that in, in just a few seconds you could feel so much emotion, but wow, well, it's like reliving the whole thing. But I felt like if she's gone, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here either. And I remember that, feeling that I didn't want to be alive if she wasn't alive. But to everyone's surprise and relief, a little figure appeared in the midst of the dust and debris. About probably 15 to 20 seconds later, she came running from the very back of the store and was saying, oh, I'm right here, Mommy, I'm right here. And that was the biggest blessing, seeing that child run through there you've ever had in your life. Rick and Teresa started to question little Elise. Her story shocked everyone. And I said, are you OK? And she said, I'm fine. And I said, well, Elise, how did you get off the drums? You were right there on them. And she said, well, Jesus picked me up and moved me, Mom. She said that when he picked her up, he picked her up with one hand, and she said he has really big hands, Mommy, and it, it felt like I was in water. Since then, her story hasn't changed. You told me he did something to your face. What was that? Kiss me. Kissed you where? Can you show him on? Right there. How big is Jesus? 
bigger than the whole world. Bigger than the whole world? The local paper reported that a medical condition may have been the cause of the driver losing control of the car. Amazingly, he went to the hospital with minor injuries. Store clerk Steve Totten is still amazed at what he saw that day. The last I saw her, she was sitting at the drum set, and it happened so fast, we thought she had gotten covered up by the debris. It's just a miracle that nobody got hurt or killed. And to know that she was okay, you know, that made me feel a whole lot better, because we really thought she was covered up in all that stuff. Rick and Teresa believe that God truly protected their little girl that rainy summer afternoon. I think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were in the fiery furnace, and they came out with not even the smell of smoke. And she was so protected that she didn't even have the fear from the accident that we had. It's the most miraculous thing I've ever seen in my life. If I've never said another miracle, as long as I live, I mean, I can actually say I saw one that day. Boy, we love these stories when we see God at work in such a miraculous way. And we want you to know that He is answering prayer. I've just been looking through some of our, of our testimonies that have come into our prayer lines from people uh, all the way from Clarenville, uh, Newfoundland, where uh, a lady was healed of a, of a physical issue. We have another person out in North Vancouver from coast to coast in Canada. Uh, she was addicted to nicotine, and God delivered her. And then from my hometown, I love to look for prayer requests from Timmins, but Donna was uh, called us and said that she'd suffered with arthritis in her vertebrae and back for so many years, and praying with our prayer counselors, what happened was God touched her and healed her. That's what God is up to today. We have such a confidence in the nature of who God is, and we want you to know that He cares about you. Our, our faith is in a life that lasts beyond this one. We, we're concerned about this life, but we're also able to live this life confident that there's a life after death, that there's life beyond the grave. Do you know that life? Do you have eternal life? If not, we would love to talk with you and pray with you at 877-431-7887 or 416-431-0700. And we have a little booklet for you called Life Beyond the Grave. We'll send it to you. We trust that you know Jesus, whom to know is to have life eternal. God bless. We'll see you next time on the Canadian 700 Club. morning. Sorry, guys. I must have slept through the alarm. Eh, don't yes. worry. Frank seems to have run out of gas again. You must have had some weekend. Oh, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. <laughs> Try me. Well, my wife and I help counsel couples with marital problems. You're kidding, right? Oh, I barely got my grass cut this weekend. Well, we help deliver food and blankets to inner city families. I guess he had time to feed the hungry in third world countries, too. <laughs> huh? Yeah, we help. How'd you manage that? And we joined a 700 club. They do those kinds of things all the time. <laughs> What did that set you back? Would you pay for that cup of coffee? You'll be amazed by what you can do as a member of the 700 Club. Your gift of just 65 cents a day, $20 a month, will help reach the lost for Christ in powerful ways. Call now and join friends who are restoring broken lives with God's love, providing food and clothing to the needy in your community, preaching the gospel to the unreached, and opening churches where there are none. Join the 700 Club and change the world with the change in your pocket. For more information, or if you'd like to help continue the ministry of Canadian Edition, please write to us with your gift today. Our address is CBA Post Office Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S 4T4. Become a 700 Club partner and write today.